Let's continue. So we will have a lecture to uh, compensate for last Wednesday, next week uh, Wednesday. And uh, uh, probably in this place, also on Friday, like something like extended office hours. So I would urge you to um, collect all the questions that you might have, right? And then uh, uh, on Friday, uh, we will stay as long as necessary for me going through whatever uh, you want to see, right? So to make sure. Uh, now, on the class website, and it might be old, I just uh, uh, sent to my admin uh, replacement sheet. Um, you will find practice problems for the final. And the way how you should prepare for the final is, first of all, you read and uh, understand uh, everything uh, about the examples that we did in class that are on transparencies. If you don't understand something, ask me on Friday or after that, I'll have regular office hours where you can come and ask any questions. And by the way, also if you have grievances about your assignments or your midterm, I'll be available uh, between the, uh, you know, next week and until the final and maybe a couple of days after the final if you uh, want to haggle with me about how many points you got on the assignments. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so, when you see a new problem, okay, always first think, kind of, think opportunistically. So first try to see if this is maybe just a disguise of a problem that you have already seen, right? So sometimes the problem might look different, but it's actually the very same uh, problem. So here is an example. Oh, sorry. Before I start with the review problems, I have to correct myself something that one of you noticed uh, who was watching the recordings uh, of the class uh, when I did an example of uh, solving by max flow this uh, problem with uh, hospitals and uh, patients. You see, this problem has two forms. Uh, and I started telling it in one form, and then without realizing, I switched to actually a very similar but slightly different problem. So these are the two problems. One of them I, start, I did uh, last time and uh, messed it up a little bit. The other is on the... Uh, problem set here. So in the shape that uh, we saw in class is that you have buildings, right, that have certain number of uh, victims of an earthquake, right? Uh, and uh, then you have hospitals uh, here. And uh, you want to distribute the patients to the hospitals, but in such a way that no patient goes to a hospital that is farther away than, say, five miles, right? So what did I say? I said you collect, you connect all the, these are essentially the sources, right? So we make a super source here. And we make, these are essentially the sinks. So we make a super sink here. And what I said is that here, the capacity of this pipe that connects it to the super source is the number of injured people in this house, right? And here, the capacity is just the number of beds in each of the hospitals, right? And then you have a pipe from a hospital, sorry, from a house 
to a hospital just in case this distance is smaller than whatever five uh, kilometers or whatever we say. Okay, that's one version of the problem. The other version that is slightly different is when you don't have the buildings but you have the patients themselves, right? And uh, again, you connect them, all the patients with the uh, uh, super source and all the hospitals uh, with the uh, super sink, right? And uh, in this case, again, here you have number of beds uh, in the hospital as the capacity. Now, the difference here is that uh, the sources can have multiple patients, right? So what I messed up, I uh, said that the capacity of each of these pipes is one because every patient can go either to one hospital, uh, it cannot go half, hospital, half of the patient here and half of the patient here. I was just joking, right? Uh, so, uh, but you see the thing is uh, this, if I put the capacity of these pipes to one, this would add another constraint, which is not very logical for this setup. If I put that these capacities of these pipes are one, what am I enforcing then? Yes? Exactly, so this is in case these guys hate each other so much that they don't want to end up in the same hospital, right? So this is actually a bad idea, we should uh, make the capacity here at least as large as the number of people here and it won't hurt if you actually make it infinite capacity, right? Because the constraint will be enforced by this pipe. And then it's easy to see that if you have a max flow, uh, the corresponding mean cut can never cut any of these pipes. Why? Well, it would cut one of these pipes if uh, um, there was still a leftover capacity here, so there are more available people, right? But then, because this is no longer uh, the, um, accessible in order to belong to the cut, right? Then this uh, hospital has to be filled by other sources to full capacity. Otherwise, if it has some capacity left, you could send more people this way, right? So the mean cut will always cut here because the pipe has to be fully uh, occupied. Now here it's perfectly okay to put capacity one if you have individual uh, uh, patients, but again it's inessential because this constraint here will guarantee that uh, at most unit flow can go from each source to uh, each hospital, right? So I started this setup and then somehow I uh, got confused what exactly I was doing and I thought that uh, um, I was here and uh, so we got this confusion due to old age. Okay, so uh, we will go back to more uh, max flow problems, let us first practice dynamic programming, okay? Um, so as I said, first, when you see a problem, including on the final, right? Think if this is something that is just differently set up, but you know how to do it. So here is a problem. Uh, assume that I'm in a candy store, okay? And here is one chocolate that costs a certain price, P1. And if I eat it, I get the amount of pleasure that is certain number. Uh, okay, so this is the price. So let's call it D1, dollar amount one. And this is P1 that is, say, between one and 100, right? Depending how big the chocolate is. Okay. So, uh, and you have a box of this type of candies, then you have a big box of another type of candies, right? 
Uh, and you know its price, that it's D2 amount of cents, and the amount of pleasure that I get is uh, P2, and so forth. It's a large store, so you have here, say, uh, D100 for the price uh, of another suite, and the pleasure is uh, uh, P100. And I have um, some M amount of money. So my task is now to decide which suites I should buy to maximize the total amount of pleasure that I will get when I gobble them up all. What a nice problem. What do you think? What is this problem? Very good. Anyone else has an idea which one it is? What is this dollar amount is uh, acts essentially as what? And uh, um, the prices, you see, these prices have to fit into this budget. You cannot exceed uh, this budget. And the value that you get is some of these pleasure factors. What is this essentially? More people I want to hear. This is knapsack, right? Even though it is not formulated as knapsack, you can think of the dollar amount as a knapsack that you have to fit all these sizes. So the sizes here are the prices. And the values are these pleasure factors. So voila, even if it's not formulated as a knapsack, it's easily reducible to a knapsack. So when you see a new problem, always think first opportunistically, have I seen something like that before? Right? Because you don't want to uh, in, uh, reinvent the wheel if you already uh, have invented it. Okay? So very good. This is just a knapsack. Here is a little bit uh, less obvious example. You have a river, okay, and you have a bunch of cities, uh, C1, C2, C3, up to, say, C100. And on the other side of the river, you have the corresponding airports. Say here is airport A2, here is airport A5, here is airport uh, A1, all the way maybe somewhere in the end is A airport A11, because these people were not terribly good when doing city planning, right? Um, <coughs> so what you want to do is connect as many cities with the corresponding airports uh, by bridges. But the condition is uh, that no two bridges should intersect. They cannot cross each other. And I say we've seen this problem before. Which, what is this problem? So once again, you have, we can assume that they are ordered here as uh, city one, city two, city three, because you can always re-numerate uh, them. And then you have airports in a different order. And you want to connect them, for example, if you connect A1 and C1, you can no longer connect C2 and A2 because they would intersect. Yes? Mm -hmm. Something even simpler. It is kind of match matching up. Uh, oh, that's an interesting uh, idea. You should think and see whether you can reduce it actually to that. Uh, but there is something. Uh, let me ask you a question. In w if you look at the airports that are connected uh, with the corresponding cities, uh, in what case uh, 
will the bridges not intersect? What is the condition that the sequence, that the subsequence of the airports has to satisfy so that no two bridges intersect? Yeah, so how do we formulate this? This subsequence has to be increasing. Very good. It has to be increasing, right? Because if you have airport A, sorry, if you have city CI, uh, then connected to the airport AI and city say CJ that comes after this, it will be, um, it will be, uh, it, uh, they will not cross just in case, uh, right? The index of the airport AJ is larger than the index of the airport R, I, because if the index is smaller, voila, you will have a crossing. So how do we call this problem if we want to maximize the number of bridges? Huh? What is the problem that we did in class? How did we call it? Maximal what? Maximal increasing subsequence. That's correct. So that's the reason if it's just, you know, the, the main reason is, of course, because I want you to learn well dynamic programming, but uh, make sure you understand your, the, the examples we did in class, because maybe I will sneak something on the final that is uh, um, essentially something that you know how to do. Um, and uh, it's just uh, specified in a different, wrapped in a different package. So this will be a, no intersections, just in case this is an increasing subsequence. And of course, because we want to maximize the number of bridges, we are looking for maximal increasing subsequence. Good. So you can see on this example that, okay, second step. So sometimes it's really the very same problem that you have seen. But sometimes it's not, but it is almost the same in the sense that the very same trick that you've seen actually works. And here is another uh, problem. You have a bunch of boxes, uh, right? And, for, um, and you have actually a bunch of types of boxes. You can have several boxes of the same type so that uh, you know the um, dimensions, you know the width, uh, or the, this should be the length, I guess. Uh, this is the width, i, and this is the height, h, i. And you can rotate them in any way you want, okay? So how many boxes do you need uh, uh, to, if you, what kind, what, how many kinds of boxes do you get if you rotate? Huh? How many different boxes can you get if you just rotate uh, a single box? What can you change? Huh? You can change on what phase the box is sitting, right? So how many different boxes? Huh? Okay, so if I have a box that looks like this, three, one, is it six? Different one. It is only three because you have only three distinct sides, right? Okay, so very good point. At most, three different ones. You must be some bloody mathematician, aren't you? <laughs> um, so, um, okay, so your task is uh, 
for whatever reason, um, well, actually, I'll tell you the reason. Now, you have a room like that, uh, and you have a bunch of these boxes, uh, and there is a banana hanging from the ceiling, uh, and you have a very smart chimp here. Uh, and chimp wants to make as tall tower of boxes to uh, be able to reach the banana, okay? But in order for that, this is a good, uh, uh, very smart uh, chimp who had some civil engineering uh, courses, and uh, uh, he knows that uh, in order for the tower to be stable, whenever you put, you can put one box on the top of the other only if both of the dimensions are smaller than the dimension of the box underneath. Otherwise, if there are protrusions, uh, it's not terribly stable, right? This way, the chimp can step from one box to the other, okay? Uh, yes, so the base of this box has to be both smaller than the corresponding base is of, uh, dimensions of the box. You have to build as high tower as possible using the, say, N type of boxes that you might have. This is, again, quite similar to which problem? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Turtle Tower? Turtle Tower is actually much more subtle because you have two conflicting requirements uh, uh, because, right, uh, you have the strength of the turtle and weight of the turtle. By the way, on next Wednesday, because it's uh, the due date of your final, I'll uh, post uh, a detailed solution to a couple of uh, uh, dynamic programming problems, including the turtle tower, so uh, you can see exactly the details how it is done if you had problems with it. It's a tough one. Okay, so how would you build such a tower? What will be your sub-problems? First of all, in order to do recursion, we need an ordering, just like in the case of the turtle tower, right? We need an ordering among the boxes so that you always build the tower by putting here, T, uh, say, box BJ, and here is box BI, so that J is bigger than I. What do you suggest? What is a linear ordering, or almost linear, because they can be e events? How would you order the boxes if you know this condition? Uh, By? Exactly. How do we call x, y? Surface area of the box. Okay. So, um, well, first we have to find the proper ordering. And the ordering is order boxes. First of all, we assume that we rotated, we uh, made uh, three boxes out of each one. We took three boxes of each type, and you flip them along all three sides. And now we order boxes by the surface area of uh, the base of the box. OK, so now clearly, if a box can sit on top of another box, the surface area of that box must be smaller than surface area. So we should order by uh, uh, of the boxes in of the boxes uh, in descending order. Okay. Now. So now we have our ordering. Here are the boxes, B1, 
B2, B3, up to B, say, uh, 3N, uh, because we flip them in all possible ways. Uh, now, you will do recursion trying to build uh, towers from initial segments of these boxes, and what will be sub-problems? What will you try at the stage of recursion B i. Yeah? So how do we formalize this? Uh, uh, what the extra condition, rather than just looking for the highest tower from these uh, boxes, we restrict it a little bit more to make the recursion simple. What do, you, do we also enforce? Exactly. We enforce that the tower should end with the box bi, yeah? right? And we solve this for all initial segments. Now, how do we recurse? What boxes, what boxes do we look for and find optimal sub-problems for these boxes? We will look for all towers well, uh, highest towers ending with the, uh, this, say, this uh, box, so that bi can be put on top of it, right? So what are the sub-problems? We will search, we will look, first of all, which, sub, which boxes will be select. Not, obviously, not all of them can be extended by this box. Maybe this box has one of the dimensions longer than the, the, this dimension of this box. So what do we look? What is the basic compatibility requirement here? When can I extend a tower with a box BI? Yes? If like, one of the dimensions Exactly, so you will look at all boxes uh, so that both sides of the, uh, uh, that you can orient it in such a way that both sides of the box, actually this is already covered with if we take three, is it how many boxes if we also, so you can choose side but you can also choose how you put it, so maybe after all it is, uh, uh, six boxes that you end up with, is it? Right, depending. Uh, yeah, rotation-wise. Count how many boxes uh, you get. Uh, right, because uh, uh, maybe you, you can put a box maybe with the base turned turn like this, but also with the base turned like that. Uh, even though it's the same base, uh, uh, it is six, I think you're right. Uh, exactly, okay. So now, now, I, I will select only these guys, uh, right, that uh, B, I can go on top of them and look for their optimal solutions that I already found, right? Then I will add uh, which one do I choose among all of them? One that is the highest, right? One that is the highest, and you put then, and you add to this height of the box bi, and you get the optimal solution that ends with bi. After we finish all, I guess, 6n, um, uh, uh, we finish the whole iteration for all 6n boxes. Which do we choose finally? We scan through all the, so because notice now, the solution, i solution forces that the i box must be chosen. So we have to scan through all solutions and pick the tallest one. Why we, it doesn't miss uh, a op the optimal solution, well, optimal solution has to end with certain box, uh, and uh, 
it would have been constructed at that stage of iteration. Right, so it's really just like monotonically, in longest monotonically increasing subsequence, right? When you have longest monotonically increasing subsequence, what do you do? Um, right, you have a sequence of numbers, and you want to find the longest subsequence that is monotonically increasing. How do we solve this? We look at the stage i. What is the longest monotonic subsequence? Say monotonically increasing or decreasing, doesn't matter. Say monotonically increasing that ends with this number. What, how do we obtain this? We look at all numbers that are smaller than that number because only those sequences can be extended with this new number. We choose the longest among them and extend it with this. So this is another example of a useful trick in order to make recursion. Yes? Sorry, say it again. Mm -hmm. So how do you guarantee that P surfaces from a same P are actually not included in, the, in your final solution? Uh, because uh, you look for the compatibility. The compatibility is always that uh, both dimensions of the bases have to be smaller than the other. Right? So both uh, uh, this dimension has to be smaller than that one and that dimension smaller than that one. It could happen that the same box is used later, but in a different uh, rotation, right? But yeah, yeah, I said that you have uh, n types of boxes. Uh, so you can take, otherwise the problem is much, much harder. So you do have as many copies. So you can copy them. Well, you have, you have boxes of boxes, right? And of each type, you have as many of them as you want. Six will do, right? Yes. Sorry? Uh, let's see, is that right? Uh, so, um, so we have three parameters. We have uh, uh, length, width, and height. Uh, and uh, if you have three different, uh, isn't it that all permutations are? Uh, Ah, so you are saying you always put, ah, but you know, maybe one can go with the smaller to yourself, but the other one needs, because of the next box, to go like that. I'm not convinced. I, you know, I, either way, yeah. You order by area, that's right. Uh, it won't so work it's just. Not, it's, it's like you order by the area, but when you like place it, the x and y, the surface the dimension, you put the smaller one like first, then always the larger one like to seven. Uh, if, if it doesn't fit the other way, uh, this way, then it shouldn't fit the other way because. Ah, because it's always. Uh, yeah, yeah it's that might be right. Yeah. Okay, I'm terrible with 3D geometry, so I leave it up to you. You are, you have young brains. Yes. No, it has to be strictly smaller. Both cord both sides have to be strictly smaller. Why? Because the chimp has to stop here. And then it has to form like stairs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, right? 
We want to make uh, this problem chimp safe. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's uh, so. This is just okay. Here is another very similar to that in terms of what trick it is used. So you have a river, okay? Here it is. And you have trading posts on the along the bank of the river. And for each pair of the trading posts, right, uh, you have the price, how much it costs to rent a canoe here and uh, return it uh, in uh, all of the uh, posts downstream, right, for, so for all i and j such that j uh, is uh, bigger than i, uh, you have uh, uh, price p i j that tells you how much it costs to rent a canoe here and uh, return it uh, up here. And that's a really strange country, right? Uh, and the prices are totally uncorrelated. So maybe the price to go from the 7th to the 8th post uh, is much higher than from the 7th to the 12th, right? What's the question? So the question is this. So you have these trading posts and you have prices, how much it costs to rent a canoe at any of the posts and return it uh, uh, to any of the posts that are downstream, okay? So, for example, if you have uh, four posts, you might have, say, this is price $1, this is price $3, and this is price $2, and then here you have this is price, say, $0.5, and this is price whatever, $1.5 and so forth. Your task is, you are here, here you are, and you want to end up here. Um, so here is your favorite bar. And uh, you might be thinking that I'm obsessed with drinking because it's always a bar or something like that. <laughs> so uh, your goal is to rent a bunch of canoes, right, to change, uh, to rent at one place, change uh, for another canoe in another place, so that you find the cheapest way of arriving from the post one to the post n. Sorry? You cannot go back up. It's always going down. So, how would you solve? Yes. Yeah. Now, why can't you go from uh, in the opposite direction? The question was, can you go backwards? Uh? We can't. Why? Because we are too lazy to uh, pedal uh, <laughs> upstream, right? It's easy to go downstream of the river, you people. Okay, so, um, so how would you find the cheapest possible trajectory? Sorry? Uh, so you would use uh, the... That's an interesting uh, idea. It is just a graph, but uh, let's say uh, uh, you were sick when there was, they were teaching Dijkstra's algorithm, and you want to solve it using dynamic programming. Uh, that's true. Um, you know what happened once? Uh, 
I was really trying hard uh, to give like a harder example, harder problem for a final, and uh, I was very proud of coming up with this, uh, this example uh, to be the hardest problem, and lo and behold, it turned out that instead of dynamic programming, it's, it had some trivial greedy solution, and almost everyone got it, uh, right? So I was punished for trying to make life hard for my students. Okay, <laughs> so tell me now, with dynamic programming, forget about Dijkstra, who is this guy anyhow? <laughs> so how would you solve it using dynamic programming? Yes? Okay, so we use the same trick, so sub-problem Pj is uh, uh, cheapest way to get from post 1 to post j. Okay, so how do we find the cheapest way to get to the post J if we know what is the cheapest way to get to any of the preceding posts? How do we do it? Exactly. It looks like brute force, but it is not because you use the table, right? So you would simply look what are the cheapest prices to get to any of them, then say to the, so you would find mean of opt to get to the uh, post i plus what? If your goal is to get to post j. So here is i and you look, you know what is opt to get to j, what is the what do you have to add to it to get one possible solution for i? Hmm? Exactly, just cost to go directly from j to i, and you take mean of this for all, or over all i smaller than j. So this looks like, um, exhaustive search, but it is not because these guys all sit in a table, a linear one-dimensional table, right, just an array of values. So if you want to fill here for the post j, you look for optimal solutions for all previous posts, add to this uh, the price of going from that post to j, and you take min of all of these. Uh, yes? I think there might be a simpler solution. I don't, like, so if, if you, instead set, set your sub problem pj to be the cheapest way to get from post j to the end. So you start off by calculating pn, pn minus 1, pn minus 2 going backwards. Then when you're starting at post i, you have to make at least like one trip in canoe to some posts further downstream, and from that point you take the optimal solution from that point to the end. But wouldn't this be exactly the mirror image of that except doing it from the tail up? But aren't you trying to calculate the optimal solution from post i to post like j where you can stop at any number of... Yes, yes. So, but you are doing, so uh, what, uh, sorry, what was your name again? Matthew, Matthew that's right. Uh, what Matthew suggests, uh, instead of doing it this way, uh, he says the following. Uh, rather than computing optimal solution, so let pj, problem pj, be uh, cheapest way to uh, go f 
from uh, j to the end. So here, the problem uh, pj was to get from the top to j. That was our uh, sub-problem. Matt suggests let's look at optimal solution from j to the end. And then he says, in order to find optimal solution for, say, uh, some i that is above, uh, so you, you did it up to i minus 1, to, in order to solve it for i, simply check, uh, try all of the solutions for the cities, uh, for the trading posts underneath, and to the optimal, so to the optimal solution from j to the end, add the price from i to j. Well, that's kind of mirror image of this, but that's a very good point because sometimes you can do it both ways. Sometimes you cannot, but sometimes you can do it from both ends. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, we have just enough time to do another simple one. So um, here is a problem. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, you have an array of numbers that can be both positive and negative. And you want to solve the problem that says the following. You want to find the, uh, the contiguous subarray, right, substring here, that has so that the sum of the numbers here has uh, the largest possible value but you have to do it in linear time. So this has probably a gazillion of uh, solutions. How would you do it in linear time? Brute force would require to do quadratic many right, cases plus additions between any two. How would you do it in linear time? Say, how would you do it with dynamic programming? So you have an array of numbers that can be both positive and negative. You want to find a contiguous subarray, right? So that the sum total of these numbers in this array is as large as possible. Can you write it anywhere? Sorry? Can you write it anywhere? Yes. Yes. Say on. Okay, now you ruined my dynamic programming example because this doesn't use dynamic programming, right? Oh, no, it does use, it does, very good. Exactly, exactly, okay, good. So um, let's stop here, you think about this and this is the point where we will start uh, uh, the next class, how, uh, how, um, how you would solve this problem, and then we will continue through all the examples, including the max flow examples, and then you, it will be a piece of cake for you to, uh, to do the final. So I'll see you on Wednesday, right?